Okay, so um, let's go ahead and restate the twin paradox, and I've started giving my spaceships wings now. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't before. But, so the basic idea was that you have person A here that's born on Earth, and they were born at the same time as their twin, who we're gonna call person B, but on the twins, you know, whatever, on their 10th birthday, we throw them into a spaceship, and we force them to travel at some high portion of the speed of light for the next 80 years, according to our watch, to be clear. So this person's going at some very high velocity, um, you know, whatever beta happens to be. And, you know, 80 years on our watch, this is person B again, 80 years on our watch go by, this person comes back, so we're celebrating our 90th birthday. And by, the, by what we've now learned about relativity, we should not expect, when they, come, when they come back and come off that plane, we should no longer expect that they're going to be 90 years as well. Because we now know that... <laughs> that they had been moving around the universe at, you know, 95% of the speed of light or whatever. So, we expect that they come out, and they're going to be substantially younger than us. You know, they might only be celebrating their 20th birthday or something like that. And they open the door, that's exactly what we find. So, we've done this experiment in a little less um, uh, uh, bizarre manner, and we have confirmed this to actually be true. So, specifically what we do is we put synced, uh, perfectly synced nuclear clocks, or atomic clocks on the Earth, and we put, you know, I, I think the actual experiment was done with three, uh, well, six total clocks. Three of them remained on Earth, so that if there was any disparity, hopefully two, the two that agree would be the ones that we trust. For example, if one of them loses a fraction of a second or something like that, of the ones on Earth, we can disregard that. Same thing up there, we put uh, three that were previously perfectly sick nuclear clocks into a plane. We flew around Earth a few times, something like that, and we measured exactly how much time it elapsed. And we have confirmed that when those clocks walk out, of the, walk out of the plane, they were, in fact, slower than the ones here on Earth. Um, now, hopefully you just completely agree with everything I've said, because it agrees with all of the laws of uh, relativity as we put forth. Except for when we view it from this person's frame of reference. So, let's view it from B. From B's reference frame or S prime. Now, according to them, remember we we shift them out into, you know, a spaceship, and they're going ninety percent the speed uh, the speed of light relative to Earth. Now, if they were to look out, well, first of all, um, let's even before they do that, imagine that you're sitting in just a normal, you know, uh, American Airlines flight, flight seven eight one or whatever that. Um, I hope that wasn't the ones that went down. That's randomly the first number I've... Uh... Anyway, um, you're on a, a, a normal airline flight, and if you close your eyes, which, you know, if you take a nap or whatever, you don't feel like you're rushing through the air at, a at 350 miles an hour or whatever. If you're sitting in that plane, and especially if you have the, you know, the windows on the plane closed, and it's a relatively, you know, non-turbulent ride, it feels to you like you are perfectly at rest. And according to Einstein's laws... He said that, yes, you are entirely allowed to say that I am the one at rest and everyone else is moving. And specifically, when, when you view yourself as the main rest frame, everything else now has to be transformed according to Lorentz transformations. So we can do just that. And we can now view it from their frame with this person having a negative velocity. And remember, we're, we've already aligned our coordinates at x and x prime point that way. So, this brings up a really good question now. According to the guy on the spaceship, they now say that they are the ones at rest. And they look out to see a person on Earth rushing by that way at 95% of the speed of light or whatever it might be. And then on the return trip, they're coming here and they see that planet coming at them at 95% of the speed of light. So they would say to themselves, hey, I'm the one at rest. And they're going to say, when I get out of the spaceship... Because this, the, the, my twin on this planet has been moving now at 90% of the speed of light relative to me. I should be the older one. They should walk out and be younger than me. Do you see where the disparity comes in now? Relativity only works if we can view things from the other frame of reference equivalently. But when we do that, we now have a situation that we have experimentally ruled out. Because we know that this person definitively does age less than this person. How do we rectify that?
This is, this is kind of that fundamental question. It seemed like a weird result at first, but it wasn't really paradoxical, it was just strange. Now this is a true paradox. They both should predict the opposite outcome, and we have a measurable way to see who is true. So, any guess? So, here is where things really get interesting. Um, so, <laughs> so we have this kind of unanswered question, and I'm going to leave it as such right now, because I want to talk about something that's a, a little bit seemingly tangential, but I promise that this will tie everything back together.